Hello, and in this video we'll just give a look through at the basics of doing file input and output in Java using NetBeans. And it's a simple enough old example where I'm going to be using a text file. And if we look at it here, a text file here called input. It's a text document and it has three separate values, 100, 200, 3. And all what I will be doing is that I'll be reading this file and using those values. So realistically, it's how we set up our files for reading and also the objects that you will need to read those files. Okay, so looking at this here, I actually do have code here, as you can see here, that you can see the code that starts off at this point here and so forth, but just to explain other parts in relation to the code. You can see here the first object that we bring in is known as a file, okay, obviously because it represents a file object. But this file object, okay, represents where the file is stored in relation to, relative to NetBeans folder itself. So if we look at where the file is located, okay, you should see, okay, obviously uses Eugene's document, NetBeans projects. There's a folder called File.io Basics, and in the SRC folder of that, okay, there's File.io Basics, and then you've got Input. Now, it's in the exact same folder as I've got the Java file itself, okay? But we must do it in relation to the NetMeans folder. That is why, if we look at this here, okay, that is the structure there of this file path, okay? But we need to declare that as a file object. In this case here, I've called a file name. But what you will see is, is this is that we need other subsequent objects to read from this file. Excuse me, just having a bit of drinking chocolate while I'm doing this. We do need A, that this object then becomes the input to what will be a file reader object. Now what that is 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 used her for, excuse me, is we need that to read the actual contents of the file. And we use that there, okay, um, I will come back into the notion of explaining this try-catch block in a few uh, minutes' time. But we use this file reader object as the input, okay, then to a buffered reader object, okay, you can see that basically that this buffered reader object is declared at this point in time and what this is like a buffer you need it to read each separate line now i'm only using one line here to do it to keep it very very simple once i do read this in i have an array that i have declared up here but what i do then down at this point is i use Obviously lines, okay, my buffered reader object, dot read line, functionality that allows me to read each separate line. But what I will do then is split up the contents of each line by the basis of using the comma as a delimiter. So if we look back here at our file basics, okay, at our input file, you can see 100, 200, 3. So if I leave that there for a close that first bit second, and you can see here, long story short, is that what I do is I grab these two total, our series, sorry, treat figures, and I total it down here. As you can see down here, there's a printout here for that. But obviously we need to go through the steps of doing that in a bit more detail to show that. But I just want to show this actually working out. And it's actually up to this point here, is reading the file. Once we have that done, we have all our values stored in an array of our strings. But then what we do, we go through a for loop and we pr process those values and we add them up to give a sum of those values. Okay? So, realistically, is, is this to show this happening, actually happening, what I'm going to do here is go back to file.io basics, that, that folder, 
going to input and I'm actually going to just change this figure here from 100 to 1000 obviously save this okay close this go back to NetBeans itself build okay you can see that there's no problems there and run it now you can see the first value is no longer 100 but it's 1203 and it's now being reflected in a new total now we'll come on to the total later on but just to explain a few of the important elements of reading the contents number one as i said before this point here okay where you actually locate your file that you're reading from okay in relation to Net the netbeans folder because i'm using netbeans it's stored in a subfolder called file io basics in the src folder and in another subfolder called file io basics um, and we will find our way to the input txt now for the purposes of basic file input and output yes we leave that as is for the moment and obviously you can change that around okay but as i said before the file object is fed into the field file reader object okay which comes to fruition at this point here on line 28 but i do declare it up here on line 24 but then i use the file object file name down here then i use that as an input for the buffered reader object which allows us to read each line and then i split it okay so once we do have all those values then we need to convert what is an array of strings into integer values. Otherwise, we will not be able to do the mathematical calculations that we're expected to do. And because I just wanted to do one figure and one figure only, I created, okay, a figure before the for loop for subsequent um, totaling of the values. I created this variable here sum of array which basically will be the sum of all the values in the array in this case here 1203 which is 1203 okay added so what i did was a simple for loop now it does actually give me a hint of using uh, an enhanced for loop to iterate through the array if you want to do that obviously but look if you don't understand what a for each loop does it's best to keep it plain and simple so the for loop here Okay, it starts off at uh, int is equal to zero. It goes through the values, which actually is the values in an array of strings, which I've done up here. So it goes through that. But here is the magic line, really, is I didn't have a value here called individual value. And what that does is that it grabs the values within the array. In other words, if it's the first value, second value, or third value, and it parses them. What parsing does is that it converts a string, okay, sorry, a string to an int, integer, okay? And that allows us to do then, to do calculations, okay? And using that, what I do then is, excuse me, I sum up the numbers, sum up the numbers in the array, okay? So I convert them from being, from being strings to integers. I then use a variable just to store each one at a time and then go through it. I could declare this variable out there, but it doesn't really make much difference. This line here, okay, sums up. This line, excuse me, could alternatively be written sum of array is equal to sum of array plus individual value. And then once I come out of the for loop, then I print those values. Now, this is a very basic file I.O. Okay, so just to run that again, if I go back here and go to file I.O. basics and change input there. Okay, 100, 203, and let's just say 30. 
and control s which saves okay and if i go back to here okay and run it again you can see that the new figure and the new total have been reflected the important points are that you do have the file location proper the proper file location and the proper sequence of creating a file using that as an input to a file reader object then using a buffered reader object splitting the values on the basis of an agreed delimiter what you must be a, um, aware of is that there must be an agreed delimiter in other words you must agree with the person that you're working with that basically that this file is going to values are going to be separated on an agreed delimiter in this case comma okay also too another small thing is that this here this array okay string values new string a is equal to new string four has the capacity to include all our values had there been five or six values within the um within the line it wouldn't have worked obviously the last thing to do is that you close the file just as a small for anyone that has never worked with file input or output you will be asked to do exception handling now what basically exception handling is that it is a kind of an important task to do and in this case here we're going outside of the remit of netbeans so exceptions could occur and what you're saying here is is this is that rather than leaving the file collapse or the or the program collapse we are going to take care of the exception handling for ourselves now i just put in the, the, the form the de facto um exception handling but you can do it in a more detailed fashion this one here will state that okay we've got a problem where we can't do can't find the file specifically but this one here is that you have a problem with io exception altogether this will be covered in another video at another point in time i will make this code uh, available underneath obviously in the description so feel free to use it but also to you will have to set up remember you will have to set up your files vis-a-vis -vis the netbeans folder okay which i will discuss in the next video so thank you very much for your patience and we will see you in the next video Okay, good luck, goodbye, and fairly well.